I'm James Callagher, and I'm joined with... Uh, William Allard. And Gavin Tupel. So, obviously, we've been talking previously about your massive success in, in the world of swimming. I mean, I'm just going to... I'm going to list out a couple of your achievements here. I mean, I was looking at them before, and they seemed quite mind-boggling to me, because there was, there was that many of them. But just to name a few, you know, 2023 achievements, which just seemed to be your breakthrough year, really. So you debuted, um, and you saw you, you beat an Olympic and world cha champion medal winners at the uh, the recent uh, City Para Swimming World Series in Sheffield, you know, winning 100 metres freestyle, getting gold in that, and 200 metres freestyle, and getting gold in that. I mean, there's so many the achievements that you've got so far. When I read them out to you, how does that make you feel? You know, are you, are you proud of them? Uh, yeah, like bursting onto the scene last year um, makes me like um, feel quite grateful to. A uh, race against like some of the top athletes in the world um, from Brazil, um, and seeing what I've achieved, like going to the World Championships last year as well, um, uh, like the City Para Swim World Series last year in March, that acted as our like qualifier for the World Championships. So um, to qualify for my worst first World Championships, um, my first year bursting onto the scene, that's uh, uh, that felt really good. Yeah. I bet it is. I mean, they're, they're fantastic achievements. But, you know, talk to me a little bit about your journey because, I mean, obviously you're here now, you're 17 years old, you're nearly 18, we were just speaking yeah. about before. I mean, you're so young, but you've achieved so much. So go back to the beginning when you were younger. How, how did you get into swimming? Um, so I started swimming lessons when I was like five years old. Um, my sister went into um, like this first swimming club um, and then... Uh, I, I wanted to do that as well, so I just went up through the rankings through that um, and then started competitively when I was like 12 years old. Um, then I moved swimming clubs to Southwold, um, uh, where is where I train now. I've been there for nearly six years now, so that's a good program what I'm on right now. Um, and then competitively, like with GB team, I've only been on it for nearly exactly a year now. Um, and throughout the years, like, I've had a lot of support from my, my coaches, family, especially. If not, I wouldn't be here today without like my family, um, especially my sister. If not, I wouldn't have started swimming lessons at all. Really? Wow. Touch a little bit on that. You know, did she introduce you to swimming? Uh, yeah, like um, she pushed me to get up in the morning, like early morning training it is, um, to get up each morning uh, and train, and uh, that sort of made me more um uh more motivated, more motivated to do it, yeah, to do it yeah. and more disciplined to do like I mean, training and stuff you've got a massive training schedule hasn't it i mean it's you, you think of when, when i think of the world of swimming obviously we think of like michael phelps don't we and, and we see a lot of his motivational talks where he talks about having to wake up early doesn't he and, and, and yeah. train from early and i've heard you, you 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 know you're studying at the same time while you're while you're training? I mean, how would you balance that and what's your schedule look like? Um, so my schedule's, I train 16 hours a week in the pool. Um, that's three mornings a week. Uh, from, I train Tuesday and Wednesday morning. I have to be up at for half four to get into the pool at half five. Wow, God. <laughs> yeah. That's when we're all asleep, isn't it? Wow, <laughs> Jesus. Um, and then Saturday morning, um, it's an hour later, so half five I get up. Um, train at half six till... Uh, half eight is two hours and then 45 minute land training at the end of Saturday. Um, and I also do two gym sessions a week, uh, which at the moment I'm strength, uh, strengthening like the fundamentals because I'm quite new to the gym, um, working on more power work and um, just getting that in place before I go on to my first proper program. And then I do one Pilates a uh, week on Wednesday night, which I feel like helps definitely strengthen me like many sports do it like I know football does it a lot of players do it as well so I feel like that helps strengthen back and core especially it's like mobility isn't it and mobility, uh, yeah. I mean you look at some swimmers and the physique on them is that they're, they're so strong and explosive and that's that's obviously why you're doing that but it's such an intense training like session that you that you're doing and you're studying your level three extended diploma at the same time you know when you've got free time though I know it's probably rare but what you do in your free time? Is there anything that you do? Um, well, I have most of the weekend off is when I rest because obviously you want to rest for the next week of training. Um, but I like to 
watch TV like Formula One if it's on. Um, Tell James what you've just bought. That's what you're doing in your free time, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I've just brought a sauna for my back garden. Which <laughs> oh, it sounds like you're living a life over here. Wow, a sauna. Yeah. Yeah, do, you, do, you watch, do you watch the F1 in the sauna? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't got a TV quite yet, but... It's That's going to come, it's isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, you, we spoke about that, you know, that, that you're, you're working so hard. But, but Gavin, you know, is... As a person, what would you, what would you say he's like as a person behind the scenes? I think, well, Sorry, did you just get yeah, yeah. the mic? Yeah. I think what um, Will has just explained in terms of getting up in the mornings, you know, at the time he gets up, you know, if you're going to describe him as a person, it's motivated, isn't it? It's dedicated. Yeah. It's kind of sacrificing his life to the sport that he excels at. Um, so, you know, that really stands out with Will. And Will's been doing it a long time. It's not a case of, you know, he's just started doing it. He's, he's, he's proven he's got substance. So the fact that he can do that, it's, you know, it's an inspiration to kind of everybody that knows him. Um, and, you know, what really does come across is, Hard work will get you anywhere you want, and exactly. um, with Will, what he's doing now, you know, it's 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 unbelievable. We we are so so proud of him. I bet you're proud. I mean, as as a tutor as well, working alongside him. How has Access Sport kind of taken him through the academic journey? Because as much as he's doing the swimming, yeah, yeah. It, Will went to um, before he started at Access Sport. He he went to a school in Southwold, which is part of his swimming club, St Felix School, and. Um, I, you don't know it, but I'm actually Will's uncle. Uh, <laughs> really? I'm Will, yeah, yeah, I'm well, Will's yeah. uncle. And, um, you know, in year 10, started to speak to Will's mum in terms of kind of what we thought would be best for Will. And it was always access sport would be ideal for him because we can kind of like tailor a programme, uh, ta tailor our education around his swimming needs. Right, yeah. Um, so, you know, where on our um, on our timetable, you know, m most of the time we do education in the mornings and then the majority of, of the other group then go outside to train. Um, we send Will home because he's already done his enrichment hours, you know, in the swimming pool at half five in the morning and then he's probably got evening sessions as well. So we are, we're flexible, mm. we're flexible in terms of, you know, like I say, the enrichment hours, but education wise, you know, it, He's here every every day, um, so we, we're supporting him in everything we can. Um, we also support his strength and conditioning by uh, sorting out free membership for him at the um, local gym. Um, right. So he he's just come from there, so we support him with that. But kind of it's just kind of listening to him, understanding what his needs are, um, and just making sure that we support him because you know it looks like he's gonna he's gonna do very well in the sport. Well, to me, definitely. I mean, we spoke about the list before. I mean, it's extensive, isn't it? And you spoke about St. Felix as well. And from your point of view, with St. Felix, it's, it's been a big part of your life, hasn't it? How have they helped you propel forward in, in, in your career? Uh, yeah, they helped me massively, like, uh, especially the school. They're very much like this college here. Um, uh, when I used to go there before I came to Access, they help you like uh, independently, uh, very small classes, which helped me quite a lot. Um, and then coming on to here is quite a smooth program, really, um, as it's sort of the same. And it's like this this course helps me a lot with swimming. If it weren't for this course, really, then I wouldn't be as good at swimming as what I, I, I am. So. I'm sure. I'm sure you would. I think it's just you've got a gift, but it's it's having people around you, isn't it? It's about having that one network around you to help you propel forwards and. Speaking of propelling forwards, I mean, you've been you, you would been with Team GB. I mean, what's the process like of being selected for such a prestigious honour, really? Um, well, it's you get selected on the program, and then um, they send out what they expect of you to do. Um, definitely, being on the program is more being a lot more under pressure, but it's also exciting at the same time. Um, to go to like major competitions, they've very strict, but they want the best for you as an athlete. Um, yeah, and obviously you must face a lot of fierce competitors, mustn't you, when when you're coming against in in such a high level? Just talk a little bit about about that and the the competition. You must thrive in it, mustn't you? Yeah, I definitely like competing against um, like top athletes that are in in my class in swimming. Um, definitely the Brazilian at the moment. Uh, I beat him at the. 
uh, City Para Swim World Series in March last year, which like that was my first ever competition. So beating the the top like world record holder is uh, really cool, and to race them at the top level is definitely one of my highlights. How does that feel after that? You know, when you you beat someone at such a high level. What, what type of, because you know when you, you see a lot of like Olympians and they win the gold medal and I was talking to, to Glenn earlier a little bit about the fact that when you hype something up in your head, oh, I can't wait until I, I get this honour and then it happens, how did you feel afterwards? Um, well I don't really expect much of myself at the time but once I do it, um, I don't really like to be like uh, very cocky about it, <laughs> you know what I mean, like, Yeah. but I just... To, um, take it in my stride, and um, it is what it is, because someone's got got to take take the top <laughs> people. Yeah, yeah. And does that propel you forward? Does that make you want to do it even more? Yeah, it does. Like um, once once you beat the top athletes, and definitely pushes you more to try and uh, beat them the next time. And it's definitely good being around them as well, because they're really nice people as well. Um, I'm sure they. I'm sure they teach you things as well. You know, did you did you get a chance to them to give you any advice? Um, well, they're just so relaxed in the cool room because they've oh, done yeah, it so long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely teaches me to try and chill out more. Um, but it's definitely like daunting to have them next to me. I bet it is, races. and then to actually perform and win. Perform. I mean, that's a that's another thing. And Gav, you, we, we, I've seen pictures before of obviously the while he was he was competing, his peers actually cheering him on. What's yeah. that like? Yeah. I mean, you know, the fact that they're so happy. So to it's see happened him win. once. It's happened once, and it was when was it last last eight March. La March? It was last March. Um, I got the link sent through from my sister, just saying Will's racing this time. It's the final. And um, it, it coincided with one of the uh, lessons that was taking place. And we stopped everything we were doing, brought the big telly through, put the link in, and then Will was on the telly. <laughs> so we've got all of the chairs like round the television. And my sister, I think she said, Will's in lane six. So, OK, lads, Will's in lane six. And they were like, come on, Will, come on. He's got this, he's got this. And we're watching. So we counted on the television. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, Will's that one. And the race has started, and within about 20 seconds, Will's in about fifth place. And he's like, oh, he's, he's not that good. <laughs> and, the, and, and he's gone there, and he's gone back, and he's gone there, he's gone back, and it's finished. And the um, race is finished. Oh, Will come about fifth or sixth. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. And, um, and then it, it then flashed up. Will, El Will Ellard won the race. We'd counted from the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> so it was one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa. And the lads, obviously, the race was going on and we thought it was in fifth or sixth. And, you know, it's come on, Will, you can get back in it. And everybody, like everybody, all of the students were up on their feet and they sat down and they were like deflated because we thought Will didn't do very well. And then, but as soon as it then came up, you know, with the, the timings and where they finished, Will Ellard, number one, honestly, it was one of them moments where you know, the goosebumps on the back of your neck. Was it like Yeah, the hairs on the back of your neck just stood up wow. and everybody was off their seat. And honestly, they were, the students were cuddling each other, giving each other a high five. And it was one of those moments where I wish Will would have seen what was like the support he had from, from us. Special. And, that, yeah, it? it was. It was one of those magic moments. And, um, you know, you said 2023 was his year. It was his year. And I think, you know, with with the students here, I think they kind of quickly recognise that he's doing well in his sport. Um, but let's hope 2024 is going to be even better because um, there's some massive things coming up, isn't there? Definitely. We, we spoke about the Paralympics, you know, mm -hmm. that that's the big thing. But going back to the students and surely Will's success has kind of made them feel a bit motivated. I know it's a different sport, but obviously... They've seen that and want to be a bit more motivated. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. They've seen they've seen levels, haven't they? They, you know, a lot of them, well, most of them, do play football, and they reach a certain level. And what we haven't got on the program at this moment in time is somebody, you know, playing a, a, a higher level um, because they're currently students. Hmm. It's a little bit different with swimming because Will swims with GB, but he's still studying. But the fact that Will is now competing at world level. You know, fingers crossed, he's on his way to Paris. July? 
August next year. August, so in August, you know, it just sees, you know, and it should kind of motivate the others to think, okay, they understand what he does. You talked about Pilates, you talked about having strength and conditioning coaches, all of the swimming. Again, like I said earlier, hard work, isn't it? Hard work. So if the, 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 the lads on the college course can see what Will's doing, then I I'm sure that that is motivating them to work harder because we've now got a culture here in Lowestoft where the lads are now getting in before college starts and they're on the 3G at half eight in the wow. morning. So, you know, whether that's Will, you know, having an influence, but, you know, they're wanting to, to, to really succeed. So I'd like to think that, it, you know, it is, Will has got something to do with it, but, you know, it's a, it's a culture that we've, we've really got here now, so... Our peers are everything though, aren't they? So like obviously the fact that Will's doing so well, I'm sure will be a slight incentive to them to see your vigorous training routine and go, right, well, this mm -hmm. is what it takes to reach not just swimming top level, but the top level. Yeah. So they see that and that's what they want to do. But yeah. Will, you have, you've obviously got a number of different types of races. You're doing the 50 meters, the 100 meters and, and, and so on. But You've obviously proven your versatility to be able to race in all different types, but what's your favourite? I mean, you must have one, and why? Uh, well, there's there's certain events in my class that um, is only allowed, um, so there's no 50 freestyle, which is my favourite event. Right, okay. But I have to go more into the 100 and 200 freestyle, which I'm working on now in training, hard blocker training. Um, but not many athletes really go from... 50 to 400 and they focus on one but at the moment I'm trying to focus on loads of different ones which definitely helps like endurance so say if you do a 400 freestyle yeah it helps going down to the 200 freestyle because you've got the endurance for the 400 definitely helps more so I'm definitely going on to more the 200 and 200 freestyle now at the moment so as you progress I mean that's great isn't it to be so versatile but progressing forward and I'm sure as you get as you you know you're speaking about your your routine I mean it puts anyone to shame really doesn't it because it's it's so vigorous and you're training so hard and as you you're only 17 at the end of the day you know you're gonna mature physically and once you do I mean I can't see anyone stopping you to be honest I mean I, looking at you you seem fantastic and you were with Team GB and obviously we've spoken about that but what was it like that f the first week with them and obviously putting on the gear, you know, the, 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 the wearing, that must be quite an honour to, really to, to represent your country. Yeah, so I had the, the team kit come in the post. Uh, I tried it on the first time. That was definitely a special moment, <laughs> like the first time um, having it on and then going to see like the team. It's like I'm like the little boy of the team. Yes. Yeah. Um, one of the youngest, but... Um, Definitely not knowing everyone there, uh, but it's such a good environment. Everyone on the team, the coaches, so friendly. Uh, swimmers like inviting you, inviting you on, uh, having dinner with them, um, chatting to them all the time has definitely helped me as well. It makes it more real, doesn't it? And it makes you, they kind of seem human to you when you actually meet them rather than you know just seeing them on, on the TV. But we speak about family and obviously Gavin's your tutor but he's also family and I'm sure your parents travel with you everywhere that you go. How I'm sure they're ne more nervous than you when you start racing but they must be so proud of you. Uh, yeah, the mum and dad say they're quite nervous like dad shakes before his, my race, um, things like that and mum... Uh, gets quite nervous um, sitting down, but um, I do get more nervous when I'm not a big gala because mm. obviously I I don't uh, know what I'm going to do because I'm in hard, sometimes when I go to the main galas like this weekend I'm in Sheffield I don't know what to expect of myself because obviously I'm in hard training at the moment um, and I'm going straight into racing, but when I'm at the big top galas um, I know how I feel. And I don't get too nervous before competitions um, because I know what I can do uh, at that time um, as I'm fully rested and um, hopefully show most people that I can try and be at the top of the top athletes. You speak about the, the nerves. I mean, that's, that must be a big thing. And you seem to be quite calm and composed under the pressure but how do you deal with that because I'm sure at times there may be times where you don't feel up to it or you may have a little injury that you're, you're feeling like not at your best how do you cope with that in the moment um, you just got to try and 
make the most of it. Uh, you got to know it's only two minute race or so, so just give it your best. Um, that's all most people ask for. Um, sure, people understand if you have an injury or illness, then um, they know that you're maybe not on your top level, but they know that you'll give it your best. Uh, and staying in the composed and staying in the moment is, is really important, isn't it? But on to another subject, you were invited to the BBC Presenter of the Year Awards, weren't you? So, I mean, that, that's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, did you, I'm sure you saw many famous faces on the red carpet. What was that like? Uh, yes, very strange because you don't you don't really think them people are real until you see <laughs> yeah. them because they're just on TV and they're like the they're like uh, you got some good photos, didn't you? Yeah, I've got some good photos. Some good photos. Uh, we'll have to link them in on on the yeah, video because yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've met um, Tommy Fury, um, the boxer. Uh, Graham and Graham Sooners. Yeah, you got that right. You didn't get the name right. Huh? Graham Sooners. Right, well, there we go. He's on camera and he's he's getting it right. So yeah. Graham um, Sooners yeah. card. Yeah. Yeah, Ian Rush and uh, what's the uh, the right back at Liverpool? Trent. No, the left back. Left back. Andy Robertson. Andy Robertson. Andy Robertson. You didn't. Yeah, Andy Robertson. Oh well, that I'm jealous because yeah. of that. I yeah. mean, Andy Robertson to, to a lot of footballing legends, isn't it? I mean, did you get to speak to any of them? Anyone? Any of them give you advice in in the industry? Uh, not really. Uh, uh, Ellie Simmons there, the, she's been on Strictly Come Dancing, yeah. she was a Paralympic gold medalist five times I think, um, and she was there, so we were talking, chatting to her for maybe ten minutes, which was good, um, just about general stuff, what Strictly was like for her, but I didn't really get to speak to the top dogs yet. Well, um, that'll, that'll come, won't it? I mean, it's, hopefully, yeah. yeah, as soon as you, you, know, you start climbing up the ranks, and I mean, you're, you're already in a fantastic spot at the moment anyway. But we've just arrived in 2024, haven't we? And, you know, you've had a fantastic year last year, but you're looking to build strong on that, aren't you? And Paralympic year is coming up, and Paris, we spoke about before, is your aim. So talk a little bit about that. Um, so I've got uh, Paralympic trials coming up in April which is actually on my 18th birthday. It runs wow. from the 2nd to the 9th of April. My birthday is on the 4th of April, so. Um, and then I'll know maybe two weeks after that if I've qualified for it. Um, and since I've seen like the, the Paralympic gold medal, like I've been pushed a lot further to try and get towards it more and more. Hmm. Like, every day, I, like think about it, that's like the main goal, to try and try and get towards that. Or, even step on the podium will be great. I mean, yeah, I'll definitely be watching and cheering you on, definitely. But I mean, you, we speak about the Paralympics and I mean, that's going to be a big challenge as well, isn't it, for you? But you've already faced that. So you're going to be facing other strong athletes. What, what are your thoughts on that? Does it make you feel nervous or are you confident enough in your own ability to be able to tackle that? Um, well, when it comes to the main competitions, like I want to uh, meet a know in my head that I've tried my best in training and um, just go out there and do my best really. Uh, there's always new swimmers that come through, especially like in Paris swimming, there's people that get classified and come straight through um, the rankings really. So you've got to be prepared for that and try and keep yourself together and just work on yourself rather than thinking of other people because you can't control other people. That's a fantastic mentality, isn't it, to have at such a young age. I mean old people around you may try and instill that on you but you've got to go through it sometimes yourself haven't you to, to be able to have that type of mentality but that's fantastic but one question to you is that if me and you spoke again in five years that's a long time five years isn't it because you can do a lot I mean you've done so much up until now and you're only 17 but if we spoke again in five years where would you like to be professionally but not just professionally personally where, just answer that um I like to be someone that I look up to right now. Uh, I'd like to be the person that I look up to right now, um, as it uh, definitely motivates people to be like the top athletes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, definitely idolise the uh, top people, and uh, well, I'd I'd like to be one of the top people in uh, GB, like swimming wise, um, and. Like the, what the top athletes in GB right now they they look they look um, I don't, I don't know. it's all right no um, one last question for you is that during those tough races we spoke about them before 
what it what goes through your mind just as you're about to dive into the pool what is the last thing that enters your mind before you're like right game on and you're focused yeah so like the whistle goes to stand up on the blocks and you just think of everyone that's watching up in the crowd they're um they're just there to watch you do your best um and definitely like what you've done throughout training um you just got to think of that like you don't want to do all this training and, it, and you not to try your best and regret it after two minutes later. Um, you just got to give it your best for two minutes, and then if you've done your best and you haven't done well, then it's not the end. it's not uh, like the end. But if you've done your best and you suc if you success, then that's definitely like a big thing. That's fantastic mentality, Gavin. And Gavin, one last question for you is. Speaking on his mentality, he's got a great, he's got an old head on young shoulders already, but to maintain that, what would be your advice to him as, as a mentor almost? Like you said, he has got a brilliant mentality. Um, I think the people that will surround himself with, you know, he spends a lot of time with family, his sister, who's a, who's a, who's a wonderful person. Um, his mum and dad, you know, that is, you know, that's his, that's his close network. Um, I don't think knowing Will is going to venture too far away from that, so I think he'll always remain as he is. Um, success, future successes, I'm really confident that it won't change him. Um, even though he's doing as well as as he is, you know, if it wasn't for for other people kind of talking about how well Will's done, people wouldn't know. The, you know, the other students wouldn't know. He's so humble. Um, you know, he's not. He's not big time, you know, and he could be big time because of what he's achieved. Um, I just don't think it's in Will's nature, um, you know, to be any different to, to how he is now. And uh, that's credit to himself, but also, you know, his, his, his family. Um, and I think just touching on your family, um, they, you know, they're really proud of, you know, proud of you and you're grateful for them. But, you know, they 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 work everything round their children um, and they work everything around wheel swimming and um, Will's sister had a had a nasty accident in Thailand um, a few weeks ago a nasty accident and um, your dad didn't he had to fly out to Thailand like as a matter of urgency wow. and he he was out there for 10 days he was out there for 10 days had to drop everything he's self-employed he also works for the NHS so he had to drop everything go out and be with your si Will's sister and um, you know she managed to then come back ten days later. They got they got a flight home, and it was got back late. Let's say the Saturday night, and then I went round on Sunday morning, and there he was packing his bag, ready to go to Aberdeen, Aberdeen, Aberdeen for a week. You know, got everything ready, and you know, just so Will can just solely focus on his swimming. I went round there and joked because Will was sitting there. Arms out on the couch <laughs> like that, as in like, cool, you look relaxed, Will. And he just turned around and said, my job is to perform. And wow. I thought, yeah, you're right. And then everybody else is doing everything, you know, for him. And But it's to achieve his goal. So it's a team effort. And you know what, you speak on team efforts. And we spoke, we've spoken a lot about his mentality because I think that's the key to anything, any success. You've mm -hmm. speaking, spoken before about that, but it's the people around us, isn't it? It is, it is. You're right, you are right. Um, you know, my sport is football and it's easy to keep referring to a team because you're playing in a team sport. Wheel sport is an individual sport, but as we know, it's not about just you, it's about everybody else. And I think Will's got the right people around him, not just his family, not just his coaches, but, but you know, his friends, you know, they're all really supportive. The, the lads here are really supportive. Um, you could look at Will and him, look at him and be in the minority because he is the only non-football student on the programme, but they're so supportive of everything he does. So he knows that, you know, there's, there's so many people away from that swimming pool when he's on that starting block that are wanting him to do well so it is a team and he's grateful as well you can see that can't you he's he's appreciative and i mean the comment you just said about i mean that sounds like sort of being a documentary mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm here to perform but you know what it's been fantastic talking to you both mm. i mean we're going to be we're going to be linking uh, all your achievements so that people can see the type of lad that you are and you're going to have a fantastic career ahead of you and best of luck anyway for the future Thanks very much. Cheers, Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.